Okay, this is the uh, regularly scheduled uh, meeting of the Town of East Bridgewater Planning Board. It's Monday evening, March 3rd, 2021. Uh, we'll call it 7.05 p.m. is uh, open time. Currently present for the board, uh, associate member Kevin Riley, regular members Edward O'Leary, John Lawler, Rob Lyons, Lindy Snow is present remotely. Uh, Christine Hanley and myself, Roy Gardner. Also present uh, representing the Planning Building Department is Dorothy Simpson, our Administrative Assistant. So, So, Dot, do you have a copy of the printed agenda? Yes, you don't have one. The one in the book, I don't see no, a. It should be right there at the table, but here you go. Is this, there's a one in the, there's not one on the table, I don't think, right? Oh, yes, there is. Sorry. I folded it over to another page and making notes on it. So I think the, except for internal business, we gotta we gotta do that. The only the only item on the agenda that uh, is going to be before us is a preliminary plan for Knight's Way. Is that right? Yes. Everything else is just discussion. Okay. So why don't we go ahead and, and discuss that? Uh, I'm going to do some quick background for the board. Uh, back in either late 2014 or 2015, we had disapproved the, the Knights Way Estate Subdivision Plan, uh, primarily for two reasons. Uh, the primary one being it wasn't gonna, the town of Brockton had already approved the plan and the town of Brockton had required that the, the entrance way, which is a few hundred feet before you get to the house, house lots, re, uh, remain in private ownership. So on advice of town council, since under subdivision control, uh, roadway has to have access to a public way. We had to deny the plan on our end. Uh, I did recently see at least part of a remand procedure that was coming down from the court. Uh, it gave some specifics in the remand document that said these are the rules to follow and said there was gonna be a formal remand agreement attached as exhibit A, which we don't have. Uh, in the, the remand document itself uh, required some things that, that don't seem to reconcile with the plan that we have right now? Absolutely. Uh, so, so if I may, uh, the, the remand procedure had, had more or less to do with the prep. We need to know who's speaking. I'm sorry, can we have name, names, Absolutely. please? Uh, my name is Ben Carroll. I'm the applicant of record for the project. I'm joined here tonight with Gigi Munden, who is uh, the professional engineer who's put together this proposal. Um, so I think what you're referencing is the judgment of remand, which was by stipulation of the parties. The parties at the time were uh, Robert and Joanne Carroll and the city of Brockton. And the stipulation of the parties was entered into, I believe, in the beginning of 2014. Um, it essentially deeded these two, the two lots at the beginning non-buildable um, and allowed for the Brockton portion of the road to be a private way. Uh, we have since gone back to the Brockton Planning Board. Uh, we've gone through more than a couple different iterations of this project uh, over the past probably about nine months. Um, and we have, together with the city of Brockton, stipulated to some additional terms in the judgment of the remand. Uh, we've worked very closely with the Brockton Planning Board and the abutters to, I think, address the concerns of at least those involved parties. And um, so we, if, if we haven't attached the judgment of remand, it, it's not intentional. We'd be more than happy to forward that to all of you. I do, though, uh, I don't think that the judgment of remand is particularly is particularly um, relevant in relation to East Bridgewater's portion, as East Bridgewater was not a was not a party to that judgment or that lawsuit. And what we have before us tonight is a, a section of road that has been approved as a public way in Brockton, and uh, we're proposing eight eight house lots, roughly one quarter one acre house lots, uh, to be built in East Bridgewater with 
our plan is to build four bedroom homes on each of these houses. Water and sewer has been contemplated to come from the city of Rockton as well. All right, so some early problems in the remand document that I saw said that the, the agreement that was signed off on by the court as, as part of the remand stated that the roadway will be built according to the town of East Bridgewater subdivision rules and regulations, says the entire roadway. Because we already told Brock and I told him in the original public hearing of which I was present some years ago that that is an unsafe design, a 34-foot road with no houses on it necking down to what's going to be a 24-foot roughly road of pavement with a cul-de-sac halfway down the or a third of the way down the road. That's not acceptable under NHTS 8 standards at all. If and I may th that's got to go. So, so I'm slightly confused about what exactly has to go. The, the bottom first cul-de-sac. The first cul-de-sac entirely has it, to go. That road doesn't service anything before you get to the cul-de-sac. Okay. Cul-de-sacs are designed to be built at the end of the roads for the, pro for the properties that they're serving. So that doesn't serve anything. So if I may, I, I do believe that I saw on, on GIS in East Bridgewater a, a road that had a very similar layout to this abutting. That was an extended roadway that was after it was done and accepted by the okay. town. So, okay. It does serve two houses in, with two proposed house blocks in Brockton. And it's within the Brockton portion of, it's in Brockton, it's in town of Brockton. So it still should be a regular roadway. We'll leave that for later because okay. town council has already started looking at all this. Okay. Also, I just want to say the proposed road with this plan is a 50 foot wide road layout with 34 feet um, paved section for the entirety from here to the end. Right, but that doesn't agree with the East Bridgewater rules and regulations for subdivisions. It exceeds the uh, East Bridgewater regulations. So, so I think if I'm not mistaken, East Bridgewater requires a 40-foot road layout. Yes. Our, our purpose in building a 50-foot road layout was, was, quite frankly, continuity at the request of Brockton. And their, their, their push for a 50-foot road layout had to do with the fact that at some point in time, there's going to be a phone call back here that will require Brockton's apparatus, to their firefighting apparatus, to get down the street. Um, so they, they, asked that the first, they asked that the road be a 50-foot road layout really for um, the intermunicipal agreement for, uh, excuse me, intermunicipal support for the fire departments, uh, which is why the, the rest of the road is built out to 50 feet. The, the cul-de-sac itself, though, I mean, that, it's, that has been approved by Brockton as a public way. Well, when, when they accept an as plan, it will be approved as a public way. Right. All right, well, we'll have to discuss that further, you know, when we get to the when we get to the definitive plan, but that was one of the items that we had on our list of reasons for denial that we never put in the denial because we were told by council to stop at the public way issue because they you can't approve it if it's not a public way. So and so you know on on that note we we did try to come back and have some conversations here while we were working with Brock that we were told not to not to come as a preliminary and not to come to the board until we had some type of approval from Brockton. And you know, we were in all fairness operating under the assumption that the, the, the sticking point issue here was just whether or not we had a public way. Um, well, we were under the assumption that it was going to follow the, the guidelines in the remand. Correct. And obviously, apparently, those got renegotiated multiple times, and we didn't see any of those. That's kind of important. Okay. We have another issue that, that we're, we're waiting for some feedback on town, town council for, but... Right now, that land is owned by the same named entity as a current subdivision in the town of East Bridgewater, which has never been completed. Yes, yeah, so, so I think you're talking about uh, Victory Lane. Victory Lane in East Bridgewater. Um, That's I, kind of a major problem. Okay, so I was under. So I'm not prepared to brief that issue fully tonight. I'm more than happy to work offline with the board to to figure out exactly what's happening uh, on Victory Lane. But it's it's my understanding that there was an issue with the perhaps incorrect light poles being ordered and put up by National Grid. Uh, we'd be more than happy to work with East Bridgewater to, to figure out how to get a final sign off on that road. Okay, well, there's, there's multiple things and we've heard different stories about why we don't have as built. Yep. One is that Pilling is no longer in business and, and he was the one that was originally hired to do the, he did the original subdivision, he was gonna do the as built. Yep. 
neither conservation, which requires the sign-offs on the drainage system that we required, because it was a joint drainage system design between here and conservation. They don't have as built and they don't have a certificate of compliance yet. We still don't have the correct telephone poles in there, which under our subdivision rules and regulations go to full cost to the developer and get turned over as the town's property as part of the town acceptance, which we can't do until such time as we've got an as-built plan for the roadway, which should be the same as-built plan that goes to conservation because it has this, a, a common drainage system on it that conservation is responsible for parts of. So we need to get that issue resolved. I'd be more than happy to work with you to resolve that issue. Um, I, like I said, I, I didn't come prepared to fully brief that. Okay. I do recall, you know, in, in full transparency, I do recall, I think in 2017, I did reach out to the planning department here to try to figure out how we could, you know, f finalize the road and get a road bond. And I remember that there was a conversation about having to show up at an annual meeting and it just didn't get too much farther past that. But I'd be more than happy to put that on, on more front burner and, and see if we can get yeah, well, we, we can't get to annual town meeting until we've got a signed off as built from conservation to us that says, okay, we've, we've issued the certificate of appliance, the drainage system is done. Okay. And we see that we see the light poles in place. Okay. So, so I guess, you know, points, points for us to try to address between now and an additional meeting are, I guess, we, should we speak with East Bridgewater's legal office or legal department about uh, an issue with the, the first cul-de-sac or the first turnaround in Brockton? Well, I think we're going to get a, a comment back from our town council in a relatively near future. All right, and, and would you like me to share the, the amended? Um, we, would, we would certainly like to see what the final, uh, I don't know what we'd call it now, but the, the, the remand that was, that was apparently been amended multiple times since the document that we, we have in our file. It was, it was amended just once, um, I think about three and a half months ago, by stipulation between myself as counsel for Robert and Joy and Carol and the legal department in Brockton, really to allow for the construction of two house lots and to, to change the roadway layout in a way that, that they felt was safer for Brockton fire apparatus. Okay, so we'll, we'll, have to, we'll need to see that so we can at least forward that to town council and ask him opinion on on where we need to go from there. Okay. As best I can tell, other than the, the two issues that still remain, and that is water and sewer, that we are actually, uh, we'll leave it now that it, it's on a different uh, item that we're actually in negotiations with Brockton right now for both water and sewer. Okay. For a uh, intermunicipal agreement for that. Uh, at this point in time, that's still fairly early on, but uh, I would expect that some of the initial methodologies we have for that would be would be coming back uh, and be the same for here. That basically is, as I understand it, that for the for both water and sewer, depending on one or both that end up in there, Rockton will simply build the town of East Bridgewater DPW directly at a bulk meter pit that would, I would assume, be right at the end of that first cul-de-sac. That, that was how East, we understood it as East well. Bridgewater would then be required to come up with a billing system for the houses that are physically in the town of East Bridgewater that are on that, which I think would be all except lot nine, the way those sample footprints are for the houses. Correct. Uh, and find a way to rebuild that based on individual water meters, which would have to be on each house in the town of East Bridgewater. That's the preliminary discussions we've been having uh, on a team that I'm part of is, is part of the, because uh, there's several other areas in town that we're looking at to, to use Brockton services for. Uh, I, we haven't got any feedback yet from the fire department on how they would handle the, the, uh, the early feedback when this was originally done, and we originally saw it from the safety officer was that he would want to get a signed agreement for service for Brockton for those houses. Because it's actually a shorter drive from their fire station to those houses than it is to our, from our fire station to those houses. Uh, and the majority of the roadway travel would be actually in the city of Brockton. So we'll, we'll see what the, uh, the current 
safety officer says when he gets back to us as to where he wants to go. Okay. I guess is there is there anything else on this plan that you would like to see change between now and the next meeting, or you? I think generally speaking, for a preliminary subdivision plan, uh, in terms of strictly what's across that line in the town of East Bridgewater, I think that part looks okay. Okay. Um, I guess also, is, is there someone who I can speak with directly about trying to sort out the Victory Lane situation? Uh, you could certainly talk to me okay. offline. Okay. Uh, I mean, I can meet you at Town Hall just about any time and we can have a discussion about the outstanding issues and how we get those resolved. Okay, absolutely. Um, uh, are we gonna get, so I guess the several town um, departments are working on creating responses for this plan, is that correct? Safety and council, public works maybe? And are we going to receive that to update our plans for? We certainly will receive comments. The com any comments we get back, we will forward to you. Okay. There's, there's some wording in Brockton's letter of approval that, that don't, doesn't make a lot of sense to me, but. Which, can you? Uh, well, one of them, is, as I remember it, is that uh, the residents basically have to uh, form a homeowners association and pay for the maintenance of the roadway until it's accepted. Yes, That's it's not how subdivision control works. Subdivision control requires that the developer post a bond with the town and as part of the lot releases agrees that he will maintain, the developer will maintain the roadway until such time as the town has received all of the legal documentation necessary to accept the road as a public way. That's the subdivider's responsibility. So I don't know where City of Brockton comes up with that language, but that's not in compliance with the subdivision control law. So I think residents I on any subdivision road are never required to put a bond in place and then pay for the maintenance of the roadway until the subdivider decides he's ready to submit a plan so the roadway can get accepted. I think the genesis of that line was that at one point we had a, uh, a conversation about this road being a private way. If, if it was a private way, then it would certainly have to be maintained by the residents as some form of condo type association. Uh, so so I, I, I'd be willing to, to wager that that's a line that we can likely address uh, between now and another meeting where we're in front of you. Um, so, so I guess that being said, would you like us to submit to be back on here in a certain time frame? Um, do, we, do we work I mean, in, 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 in all honesty, I think it would be to everyone's best interest to wait until we hear back from. Okay. Town Council has all the documents that I have. He, he was sent those earlier and he's working on responding to the questions that I've asked him as to what should we do with, with all of these. All right, that makes sense. The lot nine, which has virtually, ha has almost enough land within the town of East Bridgewater to be a legal lot within the town of East Bridgewater. Can I ask why it has a note on it that can't be approved except I think that note is, and Gigi, you may want to address this, is, a, is just a carryover error from an original rendition which had that as a uh, non-buildable lot per the land court judgment of remand. Is that correct? Yeah, well, it's not just a carryover. The surveyor has to, by um, certain CMR, he has to keep it there until um, something is filed at the Registry of Deeds. Okay. That's why. That's the only reason. He just can't. But it is, these houses on these lots were requested by City of Brockton. Anything on the Brockton side is as Brockton wanted it and it's approved. And on the, regarding the road, on the East Bridgewater side, everything meets and most of the time exceeds the town of East Bridgewater. Yeah, the individual lots looked fine. I didn't see any problem on the. Okay, so I, th I think that's about all I had. I'll go around the board and see if any members of the board have any additional uh, questions which they would like to, to ask at this point in time. So we can start down with you, Rob. Sounds good. Y'all set? John? Ed? This is off Cowley Ave, am I right? Uh, East Street. East Street. Oh, East Street, okay. Right. Behind the landfill? Yep. It's, uh, was it 
Knights of Columbus or Portuguese? It was, it was, it was uh, Knights of Columbus. I think 25 years ago, it was yeah. Knights of Columbus, burned down. Yeah. It's off, right now there's kind of a little dead end driveway with some remains of a burned out building there. Okay. It's the old Knights of Columbus site at the, at the front end anyway. The, the back end I, is, is still best based on, I was there just the other day, it's still basically undeveloped treed area. Yeah, it's pretty a, much. it kind of abuts the, the power lines and then the, the yes. old Eagle Club land on the back end. Okay, thank, thank you. you. Mr. Riley. Uh, the only other question I have is, again, in looking through the planning board dis, um, letter from, um, from the city of Brockton, uh, we have language in there that speaks to the detention and retention basin uh, and maintenance and, 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 and so forth of that, which also appears to be part of that same idea that um, there would be a private entity maintaining this, which, to my knowledge, is not what East Bridge Road Correct. does. Okay, so. I believe that language was the same language that was in the original decision a long time ago and, and didn't get taken out. I, I believe at least two of those and maybe three of those were uh, leftovers from that and, and, and no, one, no one, when they read it through, yeah. apparently weren't paying attention and just left them in there. Yeah, because it's not even in Brockton um, city line. The drainage system is completely within East Bridgewater. So I don't see they would have jurisdiction over that. <coughs> and the, the um, you know, procedure here, I assume, would be that, that all building and so forth would be controlled on these houses by this building department. I'm sorry. I, I'm a, I think I didn't hear the last end of that question. Would be controlled by this building department. Not, and the city of Brockton basically is concerned about a roadway. Correct. Well, uh, of course, there's one house that's in Brockton, right. and that one, but but the eight homes that are in East Bridgewater would absolutely be controlled by this building department. Building standards, absolutely. Christine? So the agreement between Brockton and East Bridgewater was a separate agreement than I think the water and sewer agreement you were talking about, that this is just a standalone agreement that that the city of Brockton is looking for? I think the intent is it would set the, uh, the the business structure of how we do business with Brockton for services for the entire town. Okay, so it would be the part specifics of... specifics that we're working on right now are for a different area in town, but uh, we were advised, I, I think, a little over a year ago by council who's been trying to put together an agreement with Brockton uh, for the specific land area that we're talking about the big land yep, area big land. Uh, and it was kind of accidentally uncovered if you will that we already at least in two locations and potentially three locations we have interconnecting lines with the city of Brockton they're currently gated they're for emergency use of water uh, when those were put in there should have been a an intermunicipal agreement defining how those are going to be used that was never done apparently at least we can't find anything Mm -hmm. So it was intended to cover the town as such. Right. The suicide of that would have to clearly define within the agreement what it covered at the point in time that it was agreed to. Uh, it could potentially include this. The water agreement, again, would have to cover what it covers at the time it's agreed to, which also could potentially include this. Okay. Uh, so we don't know whether it definitely should it needs to be in that agreement or it, this is a separate agreement because the applicant would have to wait for an agreement um, so you know, I, that I, lengthier agreement would would the timing would be different I'm sure so I, I can say from the, the, the somewhat long discussion I was in with the team that's working on the yes the other parcel of land that town council has strongly suggested it really needs to include the town with the the master billing standards yes. of the town so it set. needs to be kind of part of our yes. whole package. Now, so whether or not it's a separate addendum page listing right. specifically right. what area it is, I'm not sure. I doubt very much it would be a standalone agreement. Right. So you, you would understand that. Well, well so I, you know, I, I've addressed this with also town council for Brockton, um, and it, it is my understanding though that that, they, that Brockton does pretty routinely do intermunicipal water agreements, whereby you petition the board of selectmen. The excuse me, you petition the city council the city council puts it to a vote and they i think 
relatively routinely connect with other municipalities on individual projects. Um, that being said, I do not have an example offhand of one such such project that's happened with East Bridgewater. No, we're, we're currently working on, we don't have any in East Bridgewater at this point. We're trying to get one, if, if we can get one from the city of Brockton for another town to see what the structure looks like. Okay. Our town council is working with Brockton's council right now to do that. And, and I do believe the way it was discussed in our previous meeting, it would be a master agreement that says, here's the billing rates if we use sewer, here's, here's the billing rates if, if we use water. Uh, the sewer gets a little bit tricky because uh, normally sewer rates are determined by water rates. I, if you use a thousand gallons in a in a quarter, you get billed for that. Is that, that determines what your sewer bill is going to be in addition to your thousand gallons for water? Uh, they were trying to work through how the sewer would get billed, since in all likelihood, in in a lot of other areas, not this one potentially, but in a lot of other areas, we'd have uh, East Bridgewater water and Brockton sewer. So we're still we're still working through that, but I, I agree. I believe it would all be part of the master agreement that we're currently working on. Okay. We can keep you updated with where that's going. Yeah, absolutely. That would be great. And um, any families that live on this street, they would go to aside from the Brockton house they would go to East Bridgewater school yes and um, they'd be serviced by the bus in East Bridgewater and how would that I'm sure that have to be because they're well beyond any of the busing ranges for any of our schools Does uh, need to have the, you know any yeah, the, from the school committee or anybody else give comments on uh, um, we'll, we'll certainly notify notify them I don't believe at this point in time we've notified them yet but they certainly would be notified that We've got a subdivision that's somewhere around 1.3 miles out of town before you can get yeah. into the subdivision that, that will require uh, transportation. Okay. Uh, Lindy, you have anything you'd like to like to ask? I, well, you answered two of them already on the busing and the uh, sewer. Uh, but the other one, uh, just clarify for me on the agreement from the court on lot nine, it says it's to be raised, but is that back on as a billable lot then, lot nine? Uh, the indication I have looking at the plan since it's showing a driveway with a potential house location is yes. Okay. Uh, one of the original discussions uh, when, before the, uh, at the public hearing that I attended in Brockton originally uh, I actually asked the planning board how, th how they thought they could encumber a buildable lot that met the zoning requirement in both the city of Brockton and the town of East Bridgewater. Even though there's a shared property line in the middle, how they could encumber that as an unbuildable lot <laughs> under subdivision control, because that's not legal. Mm -hmm. So apparently that's gone away and it, it, it is going to be at some point a buildable lot. What they have to do in Brockton to get that buildable, I think we'll leave that alone. There's actually enough room there to fit the house in East Bridgewater, I think, but we'll, we'll leave that alone for now. Yep. Okay, great, thanks. Okay? Yes, sir. Back again, any any remaining questions now that we've had those other questions on the board? Any questions from, uh, from this end? I have no questions at this time. I'm, I'm looking forward to working with you to figure out what we can do here. Yeah, I just want to say, regarding the slot, lot nine, it wasn't like the um, applicant fought to get a house there. Uh, the abutters and the city asked for a house to be built there. Um, so we were, this plan is so much different than what we first submitted last March. Um, and the applicant is, we literally did whatever they asked. And we come to the um, board, planning board at East Bridgewater with the same attitude. So we'll be um, waiting to hear from you. Okay. Agreed. Okay. All right. So you can get in, in in the victory lane issue. You can you can get in touch with the office anytime. Absolutely. You want to come in and have a discussion and see the list of uh, if you want a written list of items that we know have to be addressed. We'll get a we'll get the official. I think there's a letter that's gone out at least once and probably twice now. I think from ZBA, not ZBA. I'm sorry, Conservation Commission, 
asking for the ASGIL so that they can issue a potential uh, certificate of compliance for the drainage system. Okay. And, and my expectation is, as usually happens on, on subdivisions, is that would be the same ASGIL we get. Because that's the aspect we turn over to town council so they can then write the deed necessary to do the roadway taking. It will be accepted in a public public uh, roadway. And that does have to go to annual town meeting, and it is a process which takes approximately three months to do. Because they got to do legal paperwork research on all of the, the ownership and make sure that everything's clear. they got to write the deeds for the, for the takings which technically they're taking to the center line of each 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 house lot in the middle of the you know to the middle of the road to the to the to the to the lot line at the street then that's reviewed by by the board of selectmen they vote to put it on the annual town meeting for acceptance i'm i'm more than happy to work with you to or, okay. or the plan board to try to figure out how we can resolve that okay all right so it, it, i'm sorry dot Yeah, you, you certainly, you certainly should do that. I think send them the acceptance procedure that we have, it. and as soon as you hear from them, just let me know, and we'll set up a meeting at some point in the in the planning board conference room so we can have a, a quick discussion on what we need to do to get that accepted. Okay. Uh, and then, as far as this project, we meet again on the March fifteenth. So I don't know if we want to put that back on the agenda for March fifteenth, in hopes that we have some response from town council. Uh, we will have a, a, a some response by March 15th, I can assure you of that. And and I was going to talk to them again tomorrow to, to make sure if they need any further written information from me. Uh, we really should get a <clears throat> We should get a copy of whatever that final agreement, I believe probably what was uh, referred to as, as Exhibit A. Uh, yeah, I can, I can get that over tomorrow. Has the court actually signed off and closed that case now? Uh, well, again, it's, it was by stipulation of the parties. So what you're essentially doing was a settlement agreement. Um, so the parties, uh, upon you know uh, legal opinion, have decided that we can amend the settlement agreement, and we did so. All right, but has the court it actually issued the the closure of that on the on the docket? Do you know? No, and it's not necessary that they do, because it shows up as open still. Well, so the the disposition of that case is settled. So if if it's showing up on the docket as open. I can reach out to town council and make sure that that we have a stipulation of dismissal okay. of some kind at play but yeah um, okay i was unaware that it was still docketed as pending all right so if you get us a copy of that agreement i'll forward it to town council and get in touch with the office and, and, and we'll set up a discussion on the other on the other roadway at that point in time i have any additional information from from town council or any of the other you know interested parties in town like the fire department or, or, or any of the other I'll, I'll discuss it with you that's perfect all right thank you for your time thank okay you thank you time. thank you so let's let's quickly just run back to the beginning of the agenda the seven o'clock slot uh, 80 Oak Street uh, Robert Graham uh, after the last meeting we had where it was pointed out by one of the members of the public one of the abutters that was at the meeting that he felt that the lot line was incorrect uh, apparently that abutter and, and Michael Kosker and Associates uh, the design people for the subdivision have got together and, and decided that Kosker's information actually was incorrect there was a a uh, fairly substantial triangular piece of land which actually belongs to the abutter and is not part of the subdivision ownership or not part of, let's say, the 80 Oak Street property. Uh, given that, they were working on resolving that. Uh, not 100% sure that that's been done yet. Uh, since we were told we'd get a uh, updated, revised plan which has not yet been received in the office. Uh, I did have a a face to face discussion with uh, both the engineer and the real estate agent that's working on on, uh, on this, which is Buddy Morris and Mike Koska. Uh, they did have a discussion about simply taking a single estate lot and then 
uh, creating a Form A lot on the front of the property. In other words, filing a Form A plan, which would only be two lots instead of a three lot subdivision. Uh, that was one of the options we discussed. They told us they'd shortly be back with a revised plan, uh, which hasn't got back yet. So we'll leave that open as to where they're going with that until such time as, as they come back to us. They have given us a, a letter basically freeing, freeing us of a schedule right now. And just for everyone's understanding, I did forward around earlier today a document which we first saw back in, I believe it was May of 2020, uh, which effectively says, if you, if you wanted to really stretch things out, that all of the dates for, for land development before the planning board, i.e. special permits and subdivision control are told until such time as the current state of emergency is lifted. Uh, I honestly don't think we need to do that in, in most cases, but if it became a problem because of uh, lack of attendance at a meeting or anything like that, uh, we would be within our rights under the law to, uh, to invoke that extension time as long as the state of emergency still exists. Because uh, that actually was a state law passed and signed in May, I believe it was May. Uh, so saying that, we'll then move to uh, Celebrity Realty. Uh, technically speaking, uh, that's continued. We have actually sent a letter requesting Millis, Mr. Celebrity to withdraw his, uh, his application. Uh, he's actually submitted some preliminary plans, not to the planning board, but to the town as, as part of our project that we're working on for the, uh, the Highland Street, uh, Winter Street, North Bedford Street uh, parcel of land. That's somewhere around 150 to 200 acres of land. Uh, that's the land I, I referred to uh, earlier that we're in preliminary negotiations with the city of Brockton to get some pricing on how much it would cost to, to connect that to both sewer and water. Uh, tentatively, there's a plan to bring in a sewer main that, that would come up Winter Street, so it would have to come down Thatcher Street down, I believe, the end of hook around Thatcher at Summer Street and then go back north along Summer Street, intersect Winter Street, and then go west on Winter Street and until it hit the frontage of this uh, the land on Winter Street, which is the back side of that, that 150 to 200 acre parcel. That's in preliminary negotiations and a whole bunch of stuff would have to happen for that. The most obvious is it would have to go to town meeting for approval, number one. Number two, uh, the plan would be potentially to create a 40-hour overlay district uh, under zoning. That would require a map change and a zoning change. Uh, that change also requires pre-approval by the, I think it's the Office of Economic Development in, in the state. Uh, I was going to say state capital, but they've actually got their own office building down the street from the state capital. But they have to pre-approve whatever we take to town meeting for, for, for that potential project. Uh, I doubt very much that we would bring in Brockton sewer and water if we don't make that a 40-hour zone. Uh, I'm on a, a team of, it's about eight or nine people in the town that are working on this to try and see where this goes. And, and uh, as soon as we get a little bit more clarity, I'll bring it to the board just so everyone knows exactly what's being discussed. We've seen some preliminary maps that have been mocked up multiple times. I'm not 100% sure what the final map looks like, but it would have basically uh, an economic development master plan that would show probably a roadway coming, I believe, off Winter Street uh, east towards Route 18, then basically down the middle of a bunch of property lines. There's, there's property on the, on the, on the, if you will, the, the westerly side and easterly side. There's a property line almost down the middle for all the parcels. Celebrity is the only landowner that owns land all the way from Route 18 back to Winter Street. All the other parcels either front on Route 18 or technically have no frontage. They're on the back side of the, 
the frontage from uh, Route 18. <coughs> so it would be handled as some form of a, a planned unit development. I don't know exactly what terminology we would use at this point, but a lot of work to do to, to get to the point where we'd have anything to go to town meeting, including an approval by the state of our plans and, and, and documentation. So sometime in the next couple of meetings, I'll bring in more information and, and have it put on the agenda so that we can look at it. Once we get a little bit more final with the, with the, the documents that are flying back and forth with the engineer who's working on the the initial connection to the Brockton septic system for us as to what that would look like, a Brockton wastewater treatment, I should say. But Roy, what you're indicating is that what he has submitted has nothing to do with what's on this agenda. Is that right? Different, different? Yes. Yes. So, and we've got, it's been a month, we've got no letter from him withdrawing that app, those applications. Yes. I would then move that another a second letter be sent to Mr. Celebrity indicating that he would have until our next meeting within which to file that letter absent which his application would be with would be uh, denied okay so you want to make that as a, a motion I do okay second please yeah I'll second that so we've got a, a motion in a second that's a, a a motion I'll get the last name right <laughs> Uh, O'Reilly? <laughs> that's, a, that's a motion, Riley. A second, O'Leary. <laughs> to send a second letter to Mr. Celebrity requesting that he immediately, uh, in a timely fashion, send us a letter of withdrawal. Or at the next meeting of the planning board, we'll enter a, 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 a motion to deny the special permit. All those in favor, um, I'm sorry, discussion? All those in favor of the motion? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? All right, we'll show that as unanimous vote of all one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Did you vote yes, Lindy? I did, sir. Okay. <laughs> so that's that's all regular members voting and in, including uh, Kevin Riley's uh, motion. Accept the minutes of January 4th, 2021. Do we want to take that up at this point, Mr. Chairman? That's that's a that's a motion uh, to accept the minutes of uh, January 4th, 2021, by Mr. Riley. Do we have a second? I'll second that. That's a second. Lions. Further discussion. All those in favor of the motion say aye. 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 All those opposed? We'll show that as unanimous vote of all members present, including uh, including our uh, our remote uh, member, Lindy Snow. Okay, real quick, before I forget this, we do have an upcoming election. Uh, Mr. Lawler is running for re-election for a three-year term. Uh, the seat that he's in right now uh, actually has a one-year term to complete a three-year term. Uh, that currently is open in the ballot. We have what we expect is a, a viable write-in candidate for that. Uh, we will be, whoever that final write-in candidate is, uh, I'm going to print up some write-in cards that show what you need to do that we can give out to people. Uh, at the ballot box just so it's clear to them that technically they should use the correct legal name as the, regist as the registered voter's name exists. They should also color in the circle on the, on the ballot uh, because we don't have any way to handle any of the write-ins automatically. They are tabulated by hand and we've been told by the town clerk that if the name is close and doesn't clearly conflict with someone else, uh, even if the circle isn't colored in, they will count that vote. So I'll, I'll give an update to the board members at our next meeting, uh, what it looks like we're doing. Uh, the second open three-year term, uh, Sherry Bates, I believe that's the correct last name, right? Sherry Bates, who's a long-term employee down in the assessor's office, who's also a registered voter in the town of East Bridgewater. 
took out nomination papers and, and turned in enough names so she's going to be uh, on the ballot for that other three-year slot. Uh, my view of that is it will be extremely helpful to some have someone with her extensive background on how the registry of deeds work and how the assessing maps work and all those kind of things on the board. Uh, she's the one I'm usually talking to when I have a question about land that's coming before the planning board if I can't figure out something from just what I can find online. So hopefully, uh, I think we all know and, and I'll officially tell everyone Rob Lyons has chosen to depart from the planning board and has taken out papers and filed them for Board of Health. So I will uh, publicly here in our meeting thank you for the years that you've given to the planning board. Much appreciated. Oh, thank you. I appreciate the help that uh, I've needed. We know that the large salary that you get here isn't the reason you do this. So uh, we, we are appreciative of, of the time it takes to, to do what we do. And I, I think we all wish you the best of luck in your uh, in, in your role of running for a, a Board of Health official. Oh, well, thank you. Appreciate it. I think. Uh, Good luck. Thank you. Sorry to see you go. No, it was a tough decision, but. Yeah. I'm sorry? There's more than three of them, I believe. Yeah, just three on uh, the board. All right, so let, let's move along. I think on the uh, on the agenda, we're on second page. We're down to 60 Franklin Street drive through. The only thing I note right now that doesn't look correct is, is on the original plans we had discussed and I know marked up uh, that we needed a, a, a cut, if you will, in the, in the safety barrier. There's a walk through from where the new parking lot's gonna be set off the building so people can walk and park and then walk into that the door that's in the mid side of the building where the electrical office is for the electrical company. Right now that's a continuous uh, barrier all the way down well beyond the end of the building so you'd have to wherever you're going to park you'd have to walk the wrong way up the drive through lane to get into that door that's where the office of the electrical company is located so we'll we'll work through that I'm going to talk to the building inspector about that uh, so when we have when we do a full roll and we have um, you know make uh, conditions of that approval who is responsible for going and checking to make sure that the the as built condition meets the conditions of the permit does the building inspector yes enforce that special permit special permit permit requirements that are associated with any kind of physical construction and layout it, it's the zoning enforcement officer because that becomes a requirement under zoning right so it's the zoning enforcement officer who in East Bridgewater is also the building inspector yes So did he note this when he went out? And uh, I don't know that he's actually seen that. I'm not sure exactly when they put that. The last time I went by there, the barrier wasn't there yet. Yeah. So I'm not sure if he has seen that yet, because I don't know when they put it in. I was there this morning and took a look at it. So one of the, the things that they represented when they came here before the hearing is that they had the uh, agreement of their tenants to go and make yeah. this change. They did not. Okay, so I, I can attest that I've talked to the tenants. None of the tenants were aware what they were doing. None of them. That's what I was told by the tenants directly. So yeah. uh, I'll leave it at, I believe they misspoke when they said that because they clearly did say that in the meeting that the tenants knew what they were doing and they were all on board. Even the donut shop operator did not know what they were doing. Because he was flat out shocked when they told him that he had to close down for at least 90 days while they cut a hole in the wall and did all their, all their other stuff. Oh. I didn't actually go into the, the building today to see if he's not there, but a while ago when I went by there, there was a closed sign on the, on the donut shop entrance that said the donut shop was closed. Mm -hmm. And they probably would have to close when they were cutting the hole through the wall because that was right where he stored all his, all his stuff. So there, there's obviously some communication issues there. We, we, uh, 
I, I hate to word it this way, but town council has advised us in the past that it's the, <coughs> the owner of the property that we're responding to on the permits. Uh, clearly, if we see something that's a safety issue existing the way the building is used, we can bring that up, but uh, we've, we've been told multiple times in past years we shouldn't be notifying tenants in a building of changes the, the landlord is proposing through the planning board of some kind of permitting. Appropriate to have a discussion with the landlord? Uh, we're, we're certainly going to pass through the building inspector. We need to have that, that barrier fixed. I'm not sure whether we should have a discussion about it. I think, you know, based on what I read in the materials, I think it goes well beyond that. Um, you know, you have, you have problems with not only tenants, but you have problems with delivery people who don't want to come in there, uh, you know, because of the you know, the way that this thing is being configured and what have you. And I think that's, you know, as Christine said, I mean, I did, well, you know, raise the point. I think that, that certain things were certainly misrepresented to the board. I mean, I, I won't, I won't dispute that. So. Although the point about third party delivery people like UPS or FedEx or the mailman and stuff, I, I think that that sounds kind of hollow when you realize that virtually every drive through throughout the state, uh, loops around one side of the building and all along the other side of the building and everybody going in and out of the building has to cross the drive through somewhere. So it's not a it's not a unique situation. I mean the, the two nearest ones to us both Wendy's on Route 18 and, and and McDonald's on Route 18 almost across the street from Wendy's have the same situation. If you park, you can't get into the building of through an awful lot of those parking lots without walking right through one side of the drive through There are some parking spaces against the building inside the drive through that you can get in, but that's a, of the overall number of parking spaces, that's only a small percentage of the total parking spaces. Most of them you have to walk through the drive the drive through well, While that may be true, I mean, the, I think the, the thing that separates it out is the fact that there you have customers and so forth who are there for McDonald's or for Wendy's as opposed to one of any five I don't, I don't any, one of that. any five businesses who could be down here you know so you've got I mean as I said at the time I just think that the thing is it's either going to be a uh, you know a convenience store with a gas station and a drive-through or it's going to be a multi-tenanted property without that was yeah I'm not I'm not, I'm not going to disagree with that I'll, we'll, we'll I'll talk to the building inspector and let him know what I saw today. I haven't had a chance to talk to him since then yeah. and ask him to take a look at that. So, Anyone else have uh, any questions on the, uh, the 60 Franklin Street? No? Okay. So, Dodd, have we got uh, subdivision rules and regulations uh, revised with those few suggestions that town council had made? I thought we already did that. Can you just take care of changing that wording? I, I sent it down to um, John, John James and his, his group is all looking at that. Okay. And they're reviewing the roadway stuff just to make sure it's, okay. it's fine with them. Um, hopefully we'll have something back before the next meeting. So we're, we're getting close to finalizing it. So next next day you're in this week, could you, could you drop John a quick email note? And ask him when he thinks he'll have that back to us and, and tell him we'd like to have it back so we can uh, approve it as, as the rules and regs that are following a meeting. I'm still working on the, uh, the fee issue. Yes. From what I've been finding, it's a, it's a little difficult to figure out. On the surface, when you look at the fees, it looks like for some towns, we're way, way below their fees. As it turns out, for a bunch of the towns, their initial engineering review is embedded in the fee. Others, it's a totally separate account like we do. So that, that 
that makes the range of, of fees look kind of kind of crazy. <laughs> so I'm trying to figure out which ones actually do that initial engineering review uh, as part of their initial fee and which ones do all of it as part of a, an engineering account like we do. We don't have any engineering fees embedded in our, uh, in our fee table. So I'm continuing to work on that. So we have a final as-built plan for Elmwood Court and West Street as Okay, could you make sure that the Elmwood Court West Street developer has a copy of that he roadway does. acceptance stuff? Yes, I've communicated with them, um, and they weren't sure they were going to be able to get everything together for this and the entire. It's too late already, so. Pardon? It's too late for that already. So they, they are aware and they are working on it. Maybe if we have a special meeting, special time. Could you, could you make a note to, uh, to tickle conservation and ask them? if they've issued all of the, the requisite uh, certificates of compliance yet? Because okay. that's one of the steps we need to see as well. All right, so the victory lane issue, I'll have that discussion with the applicant. Mm -hmm. uh, Form B application approval, that's part of the rules and regulations package as well, right? Yeah. Street name request, Angel's Way to Snow Lane. So, so I think here's where we have to go with that based on the fire department's uh, request. And basically what we've agreed to based on, on their guidelines for public safety is that the, the name on the plan can change to Angie's Way, the snow lane. There's no real issue with doing that on, on the plan. The but we can't. Is it filed with the registry of deeds as Angie Way, the plan? All right, so we, we could get a, we could potentially get a new plan done with just a, a reprint of the approved plan with just changing the name to Snow Lane and, and we can do that on an ANR plan that doesn't require planning board approval. Mm -hmm. That doesn't change the requirement though that the fire department has mandated that that have the Plymouth Street address in between the, the two adjacent lots. So whatever available number between those two adjacent lots is, is what needs to be the legal address of the house. Yes. So would it be a number in between Lindy Snow's address and the adjacent house's address on that side of Plymouth Street? Whereas the current standards that they're going by are the state standards which now say that the the house number needs to be a correct number on, on a constructed street in between whatever existing numbers are there. And since there, there's no constructed street, it's a shared driveway, it needs to be the, it's going to be obvious to the fire department where that number is if they're coming up Plymouth Street, especially way down the road when there's not as many people in the current fire department as there are now that know what that is. But the, the state requirement that the safety guys, are, that Craig is pointing out for public safety require that it be on the street it comes off of. Okay. That's the flip side of the, the problem that we have down on Plymouth Street where those houses are physically coming off a constructed way but they have Plymouth Street addresses. It's the opposite. So, okay. Anybody have any questions about that? Nope. Just for general information, uh, Dot got me the, the most current report we've, we've got from the, uh, the town treasurer that says we're holding Victory Lane Road Bond that we're currently holding is $9,047.96. Uh, and the applicant has not asked that that be returned because they know we don't have the information 
that we need to be able to say that we're ready to accept the street. So the applicant is clearly uh, is clearly aware that there's things to be done there, and he obviously indicated that he knows that tonight. So, all right, anybody have anything else? Okay, I guess at this point we could uh, accept a, a motion to adjourn. So moved. Me too. <laughs> All right, so we we got a, a motion O'Leary, second Lala to adjourn at uh, 8.06 p.m. Discussion on the motion. All those in favor of the motion say aye. 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 All those opposed. All right, we'll say we're adjourned. <laughs>